Yo guys, before we get into the video, let me just take a time out to tell y'all about DIY OJ. So they hit us up, man, and said, let me send you a jersey. We received them in the mail, and to be honest, guys, I'm blown away at the quality of this thing. I like mine. Man, mine fits like a glove, guys. It's a double XL. Y'all see my back? Fully customizable, man. These guys have been putting out jerseys for 15 years, man. I actually really like mine. They had so much of a selection over there. It yeah, was actually so crazy, many. But... And so many colors, if you right. guys like that. Put in discount code Octobers. That's Octobers, guys. I'm going to put it on the screen right here. DIY OJ. Thank you guys so much for sending them over. This some high quality stuff and go get you one. Yo, what's up guys? So we are back with some Game of Thrones. We are checking out the High Sparrow. Does that make you think about Pokemon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were listening to the Poke Rap the other day just to like... Yeah, can you imitate it, it? Can you imitate it? How's it, it go? <laughs> Electro Daily Puff. <laughs> catch them, catch them, gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Pokemon. What? <laughs> Anyways, man, I don't know what that's about, but we're checking out the High Sparrow, and that just makes me think about the bird Pokemon Sparrow. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's just random thoughts I have. Anyways, guys, so we're back with some Game of Thrones. What was the best card you ever had? Oh, a holographic Charizard. I got a holographic oh, Charizard yeah. in the very first Pokemon pack I ever opened. And he sold it, like, recently. Yeah, I sold it yeah. for a lot of money. Um, I remember that. Yeah, I, I used to have a lot of Pokemon cards. A lot of you guys probably aren't Pokemon fans. I'm not even a Pokemon fan, per se. Uh, I haven't even seen the original series all the way through or nothing like that. I just had some random like VHS tapes. And Loki, I have a lot of cards that I'm collecting by myself. Every once in a while, we just buy a pack for fun just to see yeah. if we can get something cool. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just something to do. When you get old, your hobbies really dwindle. Yeah. So we're like on some tennis stuff and we're buying Pokemon cards. But we don't really that much. Just I'm not. Yeah, it's like once every like three months we'll buy a pack. They're expensive. Anyways, guys. But we game only up. keep the holographic ones. Thrones. And we are back. Yep. And yeah, yeah, we only keep the holographic ones for sure. Uh, dude, what are we on about? I don't know. I just love talking about Pokemon cards sometimes, but y'all, this is like a new thing I just developed. Except for when I was in third grade, I liked it too. Oh, Pokemon? Yeah. You, you thought that like at one point you realized that all your friends just didn't think it was cool anymore. Yeah, they just, just thought sort of it was lame. It. So if I talked about it passionately, they were just like, Y'all, she used to go and get straight played up, and everybody would would take her cards. <laughs> she was that girl. Like she'd go to do like I the was Pokemon trading. Yeah. Getting yeah. screwed, <laughs> getting screwed, boy. Right. Anyways, she would just like trade her good cards for the cute ones. Yeah. Anyways, story. yeah. Anyways, Anyways, guys, Game of Thrones. Thank you guys so much for rocking with us for real. Go hit us up on Patreon if you guys want the full uncut reactions to these things. I think that they're definitely better. It's worth getting for sure. We talk about it more. Uh, we have more laid back intros, just stuff like that. So go check it out over there. And let's get into one of the greatest shows we've ever seen, guys. Game of Thrones. Let's go. Here we go. Peter Dinklage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. John Snizzy's Lord Commander. 998. Where are we at? It's <laughs> that place where the, you know what I'm saying, where Arya went? Oh, that's her sweeping up. Oh, let's go. That is her. He's like, Bala Magulis. Bala. I told you. <laughs> is that all they say over there? Does that mean, like, hello? And hello back. I know what it means technically, but like Arya Loki is sucking at sweeping though. I just want to point that out. She kind of looks like she's eavesdropping or something, <laughs> don't she? <laughs> like when you got 10 minutes left to work. Yeah, just like, act like you got a quick ring. sweep. I've been sweeping this floor for days. You said you'd teach me how to be a faceless man. A man teaches a girl. While I do Iris, all men must serve. Oh. Faceless men most of all. I oh, want girl. to serve. Then sweep, girl. A girl wants to serve herself. Here yeah, we serve the many faced god. To serve well, a girl must become no one. Which one's the many-faced god? There is only one god. A girl knows his name, and all men know his gift. When he keeps saying become no one, is he talking about like dissolve your ego and all that? I don't know. Just spit. I thought it meant like be incognito for life. Oh, we done killed that man from that little that little fountain. Where are they taking him? I swear she's about to be like, a man goes nowhere. <laughs> I know, why even ask? You're not even gonna get an answer. You're gonna get a question, or whatever it is. Cersei loves that, doesn't he? I am hers, and she is mine. Already? So they come quick. She looks way better at this, at this wedding. She looks cooler, because I like that little crown she has on. That's so cool. Of course, my grandmother couldn't wait to go home. The capital's not for everyone, I suppose. She hated them gardens. Does your mother like it here? She told me never to trust anyone in Kingsley. So wonderful to have her watching over you. A lioness guarding her cub. But I'm a man now. You are. And the king. But you'll always be her baby boy. I adore her. She's always been so generous with me, so kind. And the horrors she's had to endure. 
<laughs> Using her husband, her eldest child, and her father. It's no wonder she's so protective of you. She'll never let you out of her sight. She's good, ain't she? Lots of practice. You look very much in love. The first days of marriage are often so blissful. She's certainly very pretty, isn't she? He's kind of looking like, like Joffrey, isn't he? She smiles quite a lot. She thinks she's intelligent. I can't quite tell. Do you ever miss Castle Rock? There's nothing for me in Castle Rock. But that's where you grew up. You always told me that you liked the people there better. Why are we speaking of Castle Rock? The way that you talked about it. I always thought that you missed it. That it was your real home. This is my real home now. Where my family lives. I want you to be happy, Mother. I know that. But wouldn't you be happier in Castle Rock? She's about to scream. I know. I said darling. Is he Cersei smiling? Oh my guys, this is dope. She said mother. <laughs> Marriage agrees with you. I wish we had some wine for you. It's a bit early in the day for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I can't stay. I just wanted to let you know if there's ever anything I can do for you. You were very sweet. I absolutely adore him. You raised a gallant young man. I'm forever grateful. Good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you're happy. Ecstatic. I really am. Exhausted. To be honest, but I'll leave you to it. <laughs> oh, forgive me. I what's the proper way to address you now? Queen Mother or Dowager Queen? There's no need for such formalities. In any event, judging from the king's enthusiasm, the Queen Mother will be a Queen Grandmother soon. Wouldn't that be a lovely day? Can you imagine the celebrations? They'll ring the bells all day and night. Remember, anything you need. Don't make me start rooting for Cersei now. I don't like that showboating in her face. Yeah. I I kind of do. I kind of think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I do find it highly entertaining. Yeah. Look at her. I want to fish it. Uh, I think it's funny because Cersei, like, is Cersei can be mean AF, and then now her son has to deal with, like, yeah, a but, harlot. <laughs> dude, don't, don't back her in the corner. I know. Cersei, oh, man. She'll play. She'll bite you. Yeah. The Ravens. And then Tommen's over there, oh, he don't feel any remorse for his brother's death. And, you know, not that he should personally feel it, but that was kind of interesting, what do you say? I like how Marjorie's a smile on your face, kind of evil, though. It's a unique way to be but evil. is she evil, though? She f seems pretty evil to me, the way she's trying to kick Cersei out. Maybe she thinks it's best. <gasps> oh, boy. We can't hold the North with terror alone. You can't hold the North if you let these lesser lords insult us. I sent you there to collect taxes, not bodies. Lord Cowan refused to pay. Said the Warden of the North would always be a Stark, and he'd be damned if he'd kiss a traitor's boot. He left you no choice. I flayed him living, along with his wife and brother. Made his son watch. The new Lord Cowan paid his taxes. Oh, crazy. <laughs> I have something important to tell you. Yeah, what are you, a dog or something? <laughs> we don't have enough men to hold the North if the other houses rise up against us. Do you understand that? And our pact with the Lannisters protects I had a pact with Tywin Lannister, and Tywin Lannister is dead. The remaining Lannisters are a thousand miles away dealing with that fact. They've never once in the history of the Seven Kingdoms sent their army this far north. If you think they will for us, you're a fool. He's pretty we smart. We become a great house by entering into alliances with other houses and parlaying those alliances into greater power. The best way to forge a lasting alliance isn't by peeling a man's skin off. The best way is marriage. Now that you're a Bolton by royal decree, it's high time you married a suitable bride. Who? Right? And as it happens, I found the perfect girl to solidify our hold on the north. I think I have an idea. No yeah. shot. Oh, if he's he has a marriage proposal, and I knew it wasn't gonna be him. Oh, and little fingers, little fingers, <laughs> Weasley like he's that. He's such a d bag, man. So he's got a underlying plan to sell. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it seems like it, right? Yeah, that's like that's Mount Kalen. Yes. That's where they are. It's shabby, isn't it? You've been here before. On our way down to King's Landing with my father and Arian. Where are you taking me? Home. The Boltons have Winterfell. Your marriage proposal, it wasn't for you. No. Bruce Bolton murdered my brother. Exactly. He betrayed my family. He did. He serves the Lannisters. For now. He intimately go. was a part of Winterfell that Winterfell is your home. Not anymore. You're a Stark. Dying your hair doesn't change that. Your sons are Stark. Eldest surviving child of Ned and Catelyn Stark. Your place is in the north. I can't marry him. You can't make me. He is a traitor, a murderer. You're not marrying Roose Bolton. No, you'll be marrying his son and heir, Ramsay. One day he'll be warden of the north and no. you will... I won't force you to do anything. Don't you know by now how much I care for you? No, you don't. Right. You say the word you're and you around, but listen to me. Listen, you've been running all your life. Terrible things happen to your family and you weep. Stop being a bystander. Do you hear me? Stop running. There's no justice in the world. Not unless we make it. You loved your family. Avenge them. Avenge them. 
my ass will run up that hill. So what, she has to walk down there by herself? That sucks, man. Jeez. Where's Sansa, man? I remember at the very beginning of the show, I was like, I didn't really like Sansa that much, but Lord, she's grown on me a lot, and now she has to go marry this psycho? That's so annoying. Look, they're right near her. We'll go around. We'll lose sight of them. Doesn't matter. I can get a bit old to be a squire. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they always asking these questions? How did you end up squiring for the M? He hates that nickname. Well, he's not here to complain about it, is he? Lord Tywin heard my family name was Payne, so he pardoned me and sent me to King's Landing to squire for his son. As punishment for both of you. Lord Tyrion was always very good to me. Yes, all your lords have been very kind to you. All except me. Sorry I had to squire for such a nasty person. I'm not sorry. You're the best fighter I've ever seen. <laughs> you beat the hound. I'm proud to be your squire. Aww. I'm sorry I'm always snapping at you. <laughs> if you snapped at me, I wouldn't learn anything. <laughs> and then you like, just like, the employee you want. Right. Want to be a night pod. <laughs> Too good to be true, right? Yes. Starting tomorrow, we'll train with the sword twice a day. Before we ride in the morning and after we make camp in the evening. And I'm going to show you how to ride properly. Thank you. I can't Aww. knight you, but I can teach you how to fight. I suppose that's more important. They're about to be buddies. Oh, yeah. And he's good, too. Look at that. He will win Survivor. You weren't a knight, but you were a king's guard to Renly Baratheon, weren't you? I was. Lord Tyrion said he was a good man. He was. How did you end up serving Renly? When I was a girl, my father held a ball. He invited dozens of young lords to Tarth. I didn't want to go, but he dragged me to the ballroom. And it was wonderful. None of the boys noticed how mulish and tall I was. They whispered in my ear how they wanted to marry me and take me back to their castles. My father smiled at me and I smiled at him. I'd never been so happy. Aww. Till I saw a few of the boys sniggering. And then they all started to laugh. They couldn't keep the game going any longer. Brienne the Beauty, they called me. Great joke. And I realized I was the ugliest girl alive. Not true. A great lumbering beast. I tried to run away, but Renly Baratheon took me in his arms. Don't let them see your tears, he told me. Nasty little shits aren't worth crying over. Aww. Renly was King's brother after all. But wasn't he? Lord Tyrion said he was. Yes, Pod, he liked men. I'm not an idiot. He didn't love me, he didn't want me. He danced with me because he was kind and didn't want to see me hurt. He saved me from being a joke from that day until his last day. He totally missed the story, didn't he? <laughs> and I couldn't save him in return. Nothing's more hateful than failing to protect the one you love. One day I will avenge King Renly. But you said a shadow murdered him. How do you fight a shadow? A shadow with the face of Stannis Baratheon. I know it was Stannis. I know it in my heart. You're right, because we know it. Stannis is a man, not a shadow. A man can be killed. Hand to Stannis, please. Yes. Lord Commander, I'd like to speak alone. Ollie is my steward now, as I was Lord Commander Mormons. I want him to attend my meetings, to learn from men with experience. One day, he might come on. Oh, I love that. Have you considered my offer? I have. And I thank you for it. You do me great honor. All my life, I wanted to be John Stark. Say the word and you will be. He's going to say no. But I, have to I mean, he's Lord Commander, you. you know? I'm Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. My place is here. I'm giving you the chance to avenge your family, to take back the castle where you grew up, to rule the North. You don't want him to do it. Too bad he doesn't do it, know about so. Sansa. If he did, then maybe he would. Believe me, I do. But I swore a sacred vow at the gods. Maybe. No, you're right. I pledged my life to the Night's Watch. You're as stubborn as your father and as honorable. I can imagine no higher praise. I didn't mean it as praise. Honor got your father killed. But if your mind's made up, I won't try and dissuade you. May I ask your grace how long you plan to stay at Castle Black? Are you bored of us already? You saved us from Mance Raider's army. We will never forget that. But it's a question of survival. The Night's Watch can't continue to feed your men and the wildling prisoners indefinitely. Winter is coming. We march on Winterfell within the fortnight before the snows trap us here. And the wildlings. They'd rather burn than fight for me, so be it. I'll leave their fate to you. You could execute them, that's the safest course. Or you could see if this torment fellow's more willing to compromise than Mance ever was. I assume the brothers of the Night's Watch would rather see the wildlings dead. There's little love for the free folk here. You're the Lord Commander. Your decision. You have many enemies in Castle Black. Have you considered sending Alice a thorn elsewhere? I heard it was best to keep your enemies close. Whoever said that didn't have many enemies. <laughs> Why is Dana so awesome? <laughs> he just leaves you on these crazy quotes. <laughs> he sees something in you. Might not be apparent from his tone, but it's the truth. He believes in you. I'm sorry I disappointed him. Yeah, but John don't believe in him. Right. The king is a 
complicated man. He's the one true king. He has a blood right to that throne. How does the Night's Watch vow go again? I pledge my Wait, life. Wait, that's enough. The shield that guards the realms of men. That's what you swore to be. It just might mean wading in the muck, getting your boots dirty, and doing what needs to be done. And yeah, what needs point. to be done. As long as so that's setting it up then, huh? Mm. Now John's got like a, a decision to make. Yeah, I'm telling you, all he has to know is about Sansa, and I bet he would go because that's that's terrible. Yeah, he knows little about any of that. As he, far as yeah. he's concerned, they're all dead. I bet no one's told anybody, though, about that. What do you want? Who are you? What? You, who walk in here with a coin you never earned, whose value you do not respect. Who are you? No one. Ow! God! A lie. A sad <laughs> lie. Who are you? I told you, I'm not... Who are you? You are about to find out. <laughs> what are you doing? We were only playing the game of faces. That girl is not ready. Clearly not. I am ready. For what? For whatever you want. To be a faceless man. To be no one. I'm ready, personally. Right. I'm trying to figure it out. It belongs to Arya Stark. Arya Stark's sword, Arya Stark's clothes. A man wonders, how is it that no one came to be surrounded by Arya Stark's things? Oh, ditch your stuff, ditch your stuff. You gotta join the cult completely. You basically gotta be in jail. Submit your stuff. So she got to wear a cloak and stuff. Maybe donate that stuff. <laughs> People could use that around there. What? She's gonna have to. Well, it's okay. That guy can find that coin. Not needle, right? That's like her favorite thing. You gotta hit that in the bushes on the yeah. way out. Yeah, I'll go bury it on the island. Oh. Rest in peace, man. To your teacher. What was his name? You remember? Well, that's that sword's from John. Oh yeah, that's right. But the guy that taught her to name it, though, what was his name? Sirio. Sirio. Oh, yeah, there you go. I bet it's going to come down to she's going to need to get rid of that, though, still. <laughs> that man's going to know he's sneaky. That is creepy. That's cool. That'd be like a really cool spot to go. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to, like, live there. Do you not have, like, a lot of questions? This place has to be some type of cult place or something, right? Or is it the morgue? They're using some, like, dark magic or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's got, like, a morgue vibe, but maybe it's just because there's a dead body right there. <laughs> and, like, some fire pits. <laughs> what do we do with them after we wash them? That wasn't a dumb question. <laughs> I thought that was a good question. Open gate! What in the heck is that? He knows her. Oh, and she's like all of age now, and he's probably like, oh, she's so pretty, but I don't even have no balls anymore. It probably sucks. <laughs> like, for real, you know what I'm saying? Lady Sansa, welcome. Punch him. Punch him. Lord Bolton. I like that May one I better. introduce my son, Ramsay Bolton. <laughs> the damn gremlin man over here. <laughs> Ramsay Baggins. <laughs> is he shorter than her? Of course he is. Oh, that's his real girlfriend. <laughs> oh, and she's psycho, though. Yeah, she's crazy. Remember, she was like arrowing the crap out of that girl. <laughs> I'll bring you a bowl of hot water. Damn, I Welcome home, home, Lady Stark. The North remembers. I like that. The North remembers. We'll never forget. I'll never forget. Some, Mr. Raymond. He apologizes for not being here. Take good care of him. Brothers, as you all know too well, it's long past time to dig a new latrine pit. <laughs> He didn't think it was funny. Did you see that? Yarwick and I have decided to appoint a latrine captain to oversee this crucial task. Ryan, seems like a good job for a ginger. <laughs> Sir Alistair, you have more experience than any other ranger at Castle Black. You proved your valor many times over while defending the wall from the wildling attack. I name you first ranger. Not a petty bone in your body, John. Let's go. <laughs> More jealous. <laughs> I'm giving you Commander Greyguard. Greyguard is a ruin. Yes, the fort is in a sorry state. Restore it as best you can. First builder Yarwick can spare ten I of I was his. charged with the defense of King's Landing when you were soiling your swaddling clothes. Keep your ruin. All right, all right, all right! You mistake me, my lord. That was a command, not an offer. Pack your arms and armor, say your farewells, and ride for Greyguard. I will not go meekly off to freeze and die. I will not have it! Did you hear me, boy? I will not have it! Are you refusing to obey my order? Uh-oh. What's gonna happen? You can stick your order up your- This is stressful politically, though. I mean, you might have to make an example out of him. Yeah, but sometimes that backfires. It does. Take Lord Janice outside. They said, okay. Bring me my sword. You better pretend you was drinking ale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, sorry, me lord. <laughs> I was a little drunk. <laughs> Didn't mean to say that. Get your hands off me! Stop! All of you! John said, give me my sword. It sounded like when I was about to get a spanking. He said, frighten him. You ain't at the Capitol, you at the wall. <laughs> you think he's gonna do it? I don't know, man. I need to digest this. Like, what are you doing, John? I 
I need a second. Oh, he looks fire in that coat. Oh, no, John. It's just the stance. What if he, like, knights him? He ain't gonna do that. I know. I don't know what's gonna happen. If you have any last words, my lord, now's the time. No way. I was wrong. You're the Lord Commander. I was wrong. Give him mercy, John. My lord, please, mercy. Mercy. I'll go. I will. I'm afraid. Ooh. I've always been afraid. We know you were hiding. What? Were you expecting that? I don't. I had the thought he might. No way! Don't mess with John. Santa hey. said, "I choose burning." But hey, I don't know. Was that like what you're supposed to do if you're John? What in God's green earth is this? Oh, they're just playing some duck, duck goose. What the heck? <laughs> That's the the leader. What are you doing? You have profaned our faith, the faith of our fathers and forefathers. I am the High Septon of the. You are a sinner, and you shall be punished. Dang, the High Septon was doing that. <laughs> the brothel. They sort of just came out of nowhere, though, right? Did they not? Well, they're gonna have to whip a lot of people around here. I know King's Landing's about to get whooped up. Yeah, King's Landing ain't smelt right in a long time. Your Grace, Grand Master, it doesn't matter. As the High Septon of the Faith of the Seven, an assault on my person is an assault on our very religion. You were assaulted. I was, by those fanatics who call themselves sparrows. They humiliated me, they beat me, they left me naked and bleeding on the cobblestones. I am lucky to be alive. I heard this assault began in Littlefinger's brothel. This is a rather shocking thing to hear. I tend to both the highest born and the lowliest amongst us. Even prostitutes may earn the mercy of the mother. A man's private affairs ought to stay private. <laughs> yeah, bet. Because you do it too. Right. <laughs> just squat himself. Justice. I ask that you execute their leader, this so-called high sparrow. He is a threat to everything we hold sacred. If he goes unpunished... And where do I find this man? This high sparrow. That's the episode name. Mm hmm I don't think this is a good idea, Your Grace. Nonsense, Samarin. Where can I find the high sparrow? What the heck got that going on? They're struggling. The young man said I'd find the high sparrow back here. Where is he? High sparrow. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Like Lord Duckling or King Turtle. We're often stuck with the names our enemies give to us. The notion that we're all equal in the eyes of the Seven doesn't sit well with some, so they belittle me. Oh, that's him? Seven blessings to you, my dear. Seven blessings to you. <laughs> Quite an easy burden to bear. Far easier than hers. Why no shoes? Because Those I are like your feet. Away to Ew. We all do that. It stops us from forgetting what we really are. Is that why you came to King's Landing? Tell them no one's special. And they think I'm special for telling them so. Perhaps they're right. It would be comforting to believe that, wouldn't it? The gods sent you here to tempt me. I had assumed you'd only come here to arrest me. Hypocrisy is a boil. Lancing a boil is never pleasant. Although they could have been more careful with the blade. The High Septon came to speak to me today. He doesn't want me to arrest you. He wants me to execute you. I wouldn't presume to know your thoughts on the matter. My thoughts on the matter are in line with your own. The High Septon's behavior was corrosive, as was his attitude. Having a man like that reside in the Sept eats away at the faith from the inside. So now he resides in the Red Keep dungeons instead. The faith and the crown are the two pillars that hold up this world. One collapses, so does the other. Dang, that was crazy, right? You mm -hmm. must do everything necessary protect one another so she's like joining with that guy or she like supports him i mean like to me like i'm just getting vibes of like you know like the catholic church back in the day obviously how powerful they became he just cut a rat's head hey, off wait. send a raven with this message to littlefinger at the eerie or wherever he's slithering about at once your grace how's your work coming along very well you've made progress more than i expected still a way to go but very good i'll leave you to it then make sure littlefinger is clear on the meaning of the word immediately Whoa, Frankenstein over here. Isn't that in the mountain? Don't he have him like easy, friend? Uh uh, if that's him, that's scary. She really is lovely. I hope I can make her happy. I hope so too. I've become quite fond of Lady Sansa during our travels together. She suffered enough. I'll never hurt her. You have my word. I've heard very little about you, which makes you quite a rare thing. I haven't been a lord very long. I was a bastard. And you're not anymore. Allow me a moment alone with Lord Baelish. Yes, is Ramsey just playing nice and in front of the Yes, theater? of course he is. I'm forever in your debt. They needed to start to have Winterfell, basically. This will help them out, too, I feel. He seems pleased. Shouldn't it be? It's a name I need, not a virtue. Then I have delivered everything I promised. And you're prepared for the consequences. And the Lannisters here, I've wed Sansa Stark to Ramsay. The Lannister name doesn't mean what it once did. Tywin is dead. He kept his house in power through sheer will. Without him, Jaime has one hand and no allies. 
Wow. Common as a soft boy, not a king to fear. Queen will be enraged. Queen Marjorie adores Sansa. Cersei is Queen Mother, a title whose importance wanes with each passing day. And yet she's still his friend. Men in important places whom she can ask for favors. A message for you from Cersei Lannister. A rider arrived from the Eyrie shortly before dawn. Apparently, she thinks you're still in the Vale. A message from me, you say. Strange that the seal is broken. I'm sure you understand my position, Lord Baelish. Mm -hmm. If you receive word in the night from the Queen Mother, it does make me question our new alliance. The Lannisters made you one of the great lords of Westeros, yet here you are in the north undermining them. Why gamble with your position? Every ambitious move is a gamble. You gambled when you drove a dagger into Robb Stark's heart. It appears that your gamble paid off. You're a warden of the north. I had Tywin Lannister's backing. Who supports me now? You? The Eyrie is mine. The last time the Lords of the Eyrie formed an alliance with the Lords of the North, they brought down the greatest dynasty this world has ever known. I'd like to borrow one of your birds. Cersei will expect a reply. I'd like to read the reply. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he keeps his finger on the pulse, though. Yeah. Littlefinger respects that. Poor Tyrion, he's so displaced. I know his family sucks, but I still I feel bad for him. This wheelhouse. Atlantis is a large city. I will not be of any use to Daenerys Targaryen if I lose my mind. I can't remember the last face I saw that wasn't yours. It's a perfectly good face. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. If anyone recognizes you, you lose more than that. Look, we are thousands of miles from Westeros. What am I? One more drunk dwarf. You were in a box, though, and you were chilling. We had no choice. Isn't that the craziest little, like, village you've ever seen? Yeah. On a bridge. That's nuts. I feel like my neighbor would hear everything I had to say, though. Oh, slaves. The volunteer masters are very organized. Flies for dung shovelers, hammers for builders, tears for whores. We should keep moving. Man, so there's multiple of her. Hi, Jaime Easton. The only red priest we had in King's Landing was Thoros of Mir. This one's much better looking. Oh, a red priest, okay. So Melisandre's one too. Wasn't she in Wolverine? Good luck stopping the spread of grayscale with prayer. Daria Zaltrizoti. We're going to meet the savior. You should have told me. Who doesn't want to meet the savior? Man, why are you looking at him like that? She must have looked into the light and saw him. So you're telling Let's me that wasn't Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> that wasn't Yu-Gi-Oh from uh, yeah, I think it was. It could have been. I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> I don't know. We blend right in. Oh my God, she's just like Daenerys. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You've got no drink. You've got no money. Until quite recently, I was one of the richest men in the world. <laughs> Man, he's risking it all, ain't he? Make a woman laugh. I always pay my debts. I'm well known for it. They all like her. Because they've never met a queen. You're just saying that. You know how to spot a liar. If I could pick any girl here, I would pick you. I'm sorry, I can't. Of course you can. You're shy. I'm not. <laughs> He's not. Have another drink. Gladly, but this I can't do. Believe me, no one is more shocked than I am. <laughs> I hope it passes. What will I do in my spare time? That's the bathroom, bro. That's crazy. Show's almost over. <laughs> Made some kind of mistake. Tell me what you think you're doing, and then huh? I'm taking you to the queen. He's going there already, Jorah. <laughs> is it because that's a Lannister? And he's just like, oh man, guys. Uh, why does Tyrion keep being a prisoner? <laughs> he just is easy to kidnap. <laughs> guys, crazy episode, man. So one of the things that struck me a lot in this episode was when Tommen made that statement to Marjorie and said that it's really funny how I'm here living this luxury life, like living my dream in a sense. And it all is because my brother died. That was just like a very deep thing to say. It goes to show that at least he thinks about things like that, you know, but at the same time, he said that he didn't have any remorse for it. That makes me a little scared, man, because he seems like a nice kid, but... He seems like rainbows and butterflies to me. I but he's know. just a little kid, though. Yeah. And this girl, like... He's so naive. She might ruin him and, like, change him. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know where they're really going with that. Uh, Cersei's obviously in a really weird spot right now, like... No one even like she's sitting there with the window open. Nobody's even looking at her. You know what I'm saying? They don't <laughs> yeah. they don't care at all about her. The big shocker of the episode, obviously, is Ramsey Snow and Sansa are about to. What the heck? Ugh. That's not even fair because Ramsey Loki is that was like the worst thing Littlefinger could have done for Sansa. He's so snaky, man. I would hope at this point Sansa would realize what type of game he's playing. If I'm Sansa. Well, she doesn't really know him quite yet. Well, it's just hard to put myself in Sansa's shoes because. But if you're Sansa, man, like on some level like you just you just want to break free of people but it's like it goes back to a point i was saying earlier in the series this world's very small there's not a lot of places to go right and 
She, she, I think she's actually has the idea to avenge them because the when the lady looked at her and was like, the North remembers, Sansa was like, and that's why she even agreed to go because Littlefinger encouraged her. Well, I mean, deep in her soul, man, if if she ever has an opportunity to jump, like to jump, she will. Right. I mean, she's gonna betray them the first chance she get. I mean, it's only. I just, I just guess. I don't know how she's gonna do it. But see, the Boltons are smart. They would have to know that. I mean, she slaughtered her. He slaughtered her family, so he has to keep very close tabs on her. I'd they imagine, have right? to, yeah. Right. I'd imagine that she's about to go in there and just be a prisoner. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense. Like she's basically almost the same way in King's Landing. Like. Another very interesting thing is John. Like, what the heck is John doing, man? John came and I think what it is, guys, and the, the, these thoughts just come to me like instantly, right? So I could be so wrong. Like I watch these things all the time and realize I'm dumb. Like, trust me, I get it. Maybe John's like, you know what? Even though it's part of my doing, like the wall is just not what it used to be. Right. And now that I'm in a position, you know, like now that I'm actually in that position and, you know, I don't really know how I would be until I'm actually there. You know, everybody likes to sit on the outside and think what that would be like. Mm. He's in the seat and maybe the first opportunity he saw to like restore, to become a strong leader. Right. He wanted to be a strong leader and, you know, try to lead through strength and with an iron fist and he just saw it as an opportunity it seemed like i don't know like what do you think i think it i think it was kind of to regain the like strong at the beginning there seemed to be like a standard the night's watch had and it fell apart right yeah and time. after jor mormont kind of died it kind of like you know sir alistair did what he could but like what could he really do you know craster and all that stuff junk was happening well things fell apart because they yeah. dwindled in numbers yeah so traditions obviously so broke. i feel like john did that just to like kind of like restore the values my thing is man the man begged mercy and i understand if you're john he's like man i don't want people to think that they can still talk off the lip and then just beg mercy at the end of the day and i'm gonna be lenient on them so i understand where he's coming from i really do you just got to be careful with stuff like that man mm -hmm. uh, you know i don't know if it's right or wrong good or bad I, 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 we'll see because rob stark did it and the guy like pretty much cursed him yeah, yeah. Then he ended up getting slaughtered yeah up. the yeah. car star guy he pretty much was like like i'm gonna haunt you and then basically the worst thing possible happens to him Arya's in a uh Arya's definitely in a cult i don't really know how else to describe this right uh, a worse cult than Sandus is in because she's in there she's living in that dang place sweeping the floor it doesn't even show where she gets to sleep or eat. She just is sweeping the floor all yeah, day. Yeah, 17 hours a day, guys, she sweeps that floor. Brianna Tarr told a really, really sad story, man, about how there was a time in her life where she felt beautiful and happy and wanted, and then that was all crushed in literally an instant, and it was crushed by... A lot of people go, like, a whole lifetime, and, you know, something like that will happen to them maybe once, maybe, you know, two or three times, but she said there was, like, seven or eight dudes who crushed her all at once. That's pretty tough, man. That's and so rude. So she embraced it and became one of the best warriors that because Renly was nice to her and showed her kindness. Yeah, all because of Renly. So shout out to Renly. And there was something else I was missing. Oh yeah, there's something weird going on, man. I'm getting Catholic Church vibes about uh about this high sparrow idea. So the right. idea is they came into a brothel and they used their moral authority to decide that their moral law preceded the law of the land, and they just decided they were going to drag someone out of Peter Rose's private the septum establishment right so in my mind like the guy like, who represents the religion part of the realm right i do i personally think the brothel is gross and immoral like i personally do right but the thing is is like there's my personal belief like that and then there's like the law of the land and if that's the law that's the law and this place these people can't just come in and decide that they're going to be basically like the catholic church man i don't i don't want to see these people political power i guess because right. cersei sort of seems down with it because she said she went to the leader and was basically like, we protect each other well she said something crazy about those two pillars of strength yeah. one was the faith and one was the capital and the faith or something like mm -hmm. that and they need each other to like keep up the it was like basically so. saying like their terms of church and state basically absolutely absolutely so a lot of parallels there it's getting crazy let's go let's go oh where has brand been this season <gasps> Dang. That was violent. Threw his ass in there like some potatoes in me. Mm hmm What's Varys gonna do? Just go on without him? Is that Estamont? Tarth, Sir Jamie. Oh. The Sapphire Isle. <laughs> Are we on a merchant ship? Why no Lannister sail? No respect. This ship's sailing to Old Town. We'll get up earlier, not far from Sunspear. Row ourselves to the Dornish shore in the night. You ever been to Dawn? The Dornish are crazy. We're not kidnapping that princess. We're rescuing my niece, bringing her back to her family. You don't you have to lie. Here? Right. Why not send 40 of me? Or an army? Unlike most folks, you've actually got one. Because I don't want to start a war. True. It has to be me.
Has to be you to get your respect back with Cersei. You set your brother free, didn't you? <laughs> I bet your sister didn't like that. Maris set him free. <laughs> in my regards. <laughs> he murdered my father. If I ever see him, I'll split him in two. And then I'll give him your regards. Dang. That music made it so heavy, didn't it? So it's like that, huh? Iron Bank has called in one tenth of the Crown's debt. Given the expense of rebuilding the royal How fleet, much can the Crown afford? With winter coming, half what they ask? You're the master of coin. How do we pay them? Well, House Tyrell could front the gold and the, the Crown would pay us back in time or I'd have words with my daughter. <laughs> Borrow money's not a solution to this. You've already given us too much. No, we must arrange better terms with the Iron Bank. That's where he has to go. Me? As the king's master of coin, I can think of no one more qualified. I would be honored, your grace. The king's expressed concern about his father-in-law's safety on this voyage. He's ordered Samarin personally lead your escort. Oh, man. My very own king's guard. Please express Safe travels, Lord Tyrell. I'll give your regards to the titan of Bravos. Aw, I, I feel like something bad's gonna happen. Oh, council grows smaller and smaller. Not small enough. Yeah, the bigger it is, the less control she has, huh? Right. I'm a sep. All over Westeros, we hear of seps being burned. Wars teach people to obey the sword, <clears throat> not the gods. Perhaps the gods need a sword of their own, an army in service to the gods themselves. And to you, of course, as the chosen representative of the seven. An honor I never expected, or indeed, ever wished for. Which is why you were chosen. All sinners are equal before the gods. What would you say if I told you of a great sinner in our very midst, shielded by gold and privilege? Who, you? May the father judge him justly. These guys look like they'd be some background characters in a Metallica concert, don't they? <laughs> what, smashing the barrels? I don't know, just looking like... What the heck, man? Oh, that must be Ramsey in town. There's a special place in the seventh hell for your kind. Oh, they're Brandon. Oh, my. Lancel? Why'd you say Lancel? That wasn't Lancel. That was that guy. Oh, that's Lancel. That ain't him, is it? Oh, that ain't good. That's, that's the queen's brother. You've broken the laws of gods and men. Who do you think you are? Justice. And that's Loris? Why is my brother in a cell? Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't order it. You told me she was returning to Casterly Rock. Are you saying my mother's behind this? Aren't you and mother getting along? Did she do all that just for that? Really? Maybe. Oh, my like sweet. Like, if all these people have to suffer, so be it. Sweet king. Do you have any affection for me at all? You're my queen. I can't bear to think of my brother locked away in some grimy cell. I'll set him free for you. Do you promise? To be honest, his voice is sweeter than hers. <laughs> I demand that Sir Loris be freed now. Did I arrest him? Well, no. <laughs> but you, you armed the faith militant. You gave the High Sparrow an army. And your wife has every right to criticize. You can't allow fanatics to arrest the Queen's brother no matter his perversions. And I tell Marjorie you have Solaris released. I told you I'm not holding Solaris. I'm sure if you speak to the High Sparrow, he'll release the poor boy. Poor Tommen. I'm gonna do all these tasks. <laughs> he doesn't even know what to say. <laughs> he didn't get any time with Tywin either to like, at Prepare least learn himself. how to like, yeah. approach these matters diplomatically. Right, Cersei doesn't even help him. She's like, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Oh, hell no. Nah. But he's the king. His holiness is praying. He will not be disturbed. Give the order and we'll clear out this rabble. You mean kill them here at the Sept? You'd be sending them to meet the gods that they love. Joffrey would be like, kill them all. Bastard! Bathe in their blood. Get out to my way. <laughs> Someone's like, wait, you mean kill them? We'll find another way. That's the king, y'all. What are y'all doing? My queen, there was no way to free Solaris without violence. You're the king of the Andals, and you let a band of fanatics imprison your brother by law. I'm going to speak with the High Sparrow. Are you? When? I have to send word to grandmother. Will you come back later? I need to be with my family, your grace. I had every soldier in the city at them steps. Right. That's what she wanted. The night's watch. I should have given you a son. Not your fault. It's not hers. Weakness and deformity. Those scars mean nothing to the Lord of Light. Her father's the Lord's chosen king, and her father's blood runs through her veins. Yeah, I think she looks cool with it. Yeah, me too. You march on Winterfell soon. Once before, you put your faith in Sir Devos and left me behind. I hope you won't make that mistake again. I won't. I need you. You only need faith, my king. And you, my lady, what do you need? To serve my lord. Lord Ashford, Lady Caulfield. <laughs> Never even heard of these people. But we need men and they have some. That's a good idea. How many men does this Lord Mason have to send us? More than Lord Wibberley. <laughs> Wibberley. Why didn't he say that one out loud? Not him. I know. 
I'm sorry, but we need men and supplies. Who is it? And Reese Bolton's Bolton. the warden of the North. You murdered my brother. We swore to be the watchers on the wall. We can't watch the wall with 50 men, and we can't get more men without help from the warden of the North. That's why Sam didn't say that one out loud. He just put it there. Apologies, my lady. Just keep walking, mm -hmm. Sam. End up with a freaking leech up your butt. <laughs> Lord Commander. Come with us when we ride south. None of us know the castle as well as you do. Winterfell was your home once. Don't you want to chase the rats out of it? Castle Black is my home now. There's only one war. Life against death. I loved another. The dead don't need lovers. But I still love her. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Oh, no. That was strange. She must have saw that in the fire. Oh, and she knew what she did. Always planting them Russell seeds. <laughs> they should teach her how to fight. Are you lonely? Just bored. Were you bored a lot too? I know Castle Black is not a place for a child. I like it. I... I know Mother didn't want to bring me. Why did you say that? She told me I don't want to bring you. <laughs> she shouldn't have said that. Are you ashamed of me, Father? When you were an infant, a Dornish trader landed on Dragonstone. His goods were junk, except for one wooden doll. He'd even sewn a dress on it in the colors of our house. No doubt he'd heard of your birth. I still remember how you smiled when I put that doll in your cradle, pressed it to your cheek. These cute stories always end sour, though. I know. By the time we burnt the doll, it was too late. I was told you would die. The grayscale would go slow. The doll gave it to her because she put it against her cheek? enough to know the world before taking it away from you. I called in every maester on this side of the world. Every healer. Every apothecary. They stopped the disease and saved your life. You are the Princess Shireen of House Baratheon. And you are my daughter. Wow. I want to cry right now, Stannis. I mean, all she's asking is when she walks in the room to say, hey, honey, or something, <laughs> though. Like, then you want to explain Stannis all is that. her dad. <laughs> Stealth face Stannis. Yeah. Yeah. This scene's about to be so uncomfortable if freaking what's his name shows up. He's going to be like, oh, my future wife. Hello. I like to skin people. Or is she in the. Where is she? Because it looks like dead people. Is that somebody back there? I thought I might find you here. <gasps> Even worse. What? Oh, you my God. You scared me. Well, I thought it was going to be Ramsey, but then it was yeah. Littlefinger. Father well, never talked about her. Sometimes I'd find him down here lighting the candles. Lord Went of the great tourney at Harrenhal. Everyone was there. The Mad King, your father, Robert Baratheon, and Lyanna. She was already promised to Robert. And you can imagine what it was like for me, a boy from nowhere, with nothing to his name, watching these legendary men tilting at the lists. The last two riders were Barristan Salmi and Rhaegar Targaryen. When Rhaegar won, everyone cheered for their prince. Remember the guys laughing when he took off his helmet and they saw that silver hair? Until he rode right past his wife, Elia Martel, and all the smiles died. Never seen so many people so quiet. He rode past his wife, and he lay a crown of winter roses in Lyanna's lap, blue as frost. Wow. How many tens of thousands had to die because Rhaegar chose your aunt? Yes, he chose her, and then he kidnapped her. That's what I thought. He kidnapped her. Right, but he's making it seem... Like she liked him, like they liked each other or something. Let's speak somewhere the dead can't hear us. Dressed for riding. I am. Where are you going? King's Landing. Cersei sent for me. You can't leave me here. I know how hard it is to live with people you despise, believe me. But it won't be for long. <laughs> no, we can't leave her. Stannis Baratheon garrisons at Castle Black. Once he liberates these lands from the Boltons, he'll rally your father's bannermen to his cause with the North behind him. Stannis can finally take the Iron Throne. You think he'll defeat the Boltons? He has a larger army. He's the finest military commander in Westeros. A betting man. We put his money on Stannis. But what will Littlefinger do? I am a betting man. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. And if you're right? Stannis takes Winterfell. He rescues you from the most despised family in the North. Grateful for your late father's courageous support of his claim, he names you Wardeness of the North. I wouldn't. Wardeness of the North. You are the last surviving Stark. He needs you. And what if you're wrong? What if Stannis never attacks Winterfell, or he does, and the Boltons defeat him? Then you will take this Bolton boy, Ramsay, and make him yours. I don't know how to do that. Of course you do. He's already fallen for you. His father frightens me. He's a dangerous man, but even the most dangerous men can be outmaneuvered. You've learned to maneuver from the very best. True. <laughs> Little finger is the very time best. Before too long, you'll be strong without me. Bro, why though? The North will be yours. Do you believe me? I expect I'll be a married woman by the time you return. <laughs> she has to play a long game, though. Like, that would be like, no, I don't want to do this for that long. You're a joke, bro. Well, she don't realize she's going to end up being dog food or something. You're going to rename her and stuff. Jamie said, I'm so sorry. If I help, we'll just be going in circles. <laughs> 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 they made it. Ugh. What the? Oh. Breakfast. Oh, ew. <laughs> Look, Two nights kebabs. Off to rescue a princess. <laughs> Sounds like a good song to me. Ew. <laughs> what way would you choose? In my own keep. 
Drinking my own wine, watching my sons grovel for my fortune. How disappointing. I thought you'd have something more exciting planned. I've had an exciting life. I want my death to be boring. How do you want to go? In the arms of the woman I love. <laughs> she want the same thing. I mean, it was like nice, but if it wasn't your sister. The captain of that ship. What was he? Bravosi? And so she. <gasps> Maybe that was some He's foresight right it. there. That's Maybe he will die in her arms. What? I hope not. What's Maybe she kills him. Docking down the coast. I and the locals not. that Jamie Lannister's in Dawn. Bag of gold. I'm not sure you understand how much people hate your family in this part of the world. It was a heavy bag. And I bet he swore all kinds of oaths to get it. But you won't be around if he breaks. How are they planning to do this? I'm, I'm like excited to see it. How many you count? Four. How many do you think you can take? One, if he's slow. <laughs> oh, they see him. He didn't even give him the plan. He just went for it. Morning, lads. Glad we found you. Who are you? Cooper. This is Darnell. <laughs> Your landing. Axon gave me away. Flea bottom. Welped and whipped. Why are you here? Our ship capsized in the night. We managed to swim ashore. It's a near thing, really. Thought the sharks would get us. There are no sharks in Dorn. Only snakes. <laughs> I sworn those were shark fins. Dolphins, maybe. Throw your swords in the sand. Point us in the right direction. We'll find our way home. Swords in the sand. Now! Drop it, drop it, drop it. That's why you have like multiple swords. All right, come on, Jamie. Do your part. There's your one. Ah, why always? Why always that have the <laughs> <laughs> he gave him some training. <gasps> no! That'd be so frustrating to be Jamie, though. It was metal. <laughs> oh, he used it. He's lucky. That sword would have bounced off the thumb and hit me in the eyebrow. Nice move. Luck. You had a wonderful teacher. <laughs> Is this stuck in there? <laughs> Always wanted a Dornish stallion. Beasts can run a day and night without tiring. We'll ride to the water gardens with a nice breeze in our face. First, we need to bury these bodies. Do you know how long it'll take us to dig all those holes? Do you love that answer? I can't dig very well I do like with that. one hand. Not at all, really. You're going to wear Bron out, though. Yeah, he's over here doing all the labor. He's like, I better have a big castle. <laughs> Mama. Is her daughter's? Name? Obara? Will it be war? We must avenge Oberyn ourselves. Without Doran, we have no army to march against the Lannisters. So these are Oberyn's daughters, don't need an too? army to start a war. Queen Cersei loves her children, and we have one of them. You may have a problem. He told me he smuggled Jamie Lannister into Dorne. He's come from Marcella. If he gets to her before we do, we lose our only chance for revenge. You must choose Doran's way and peace, or my way and war. I'm with you, always. When I was a child, Oberyn came to take me to court. <laughs> Why do you get a story, though? <laughs> myself, my father. My mother wept, said I was too young and a girl. Oberyn tossed his spear at my feet and said, Girl or boy, we fight our battles, but the gods let us choose our weapons. My father pointed to the spear and then to my mother's tear. I made my choice long ago. What was it? Say war, okay? <laughs> was it war? Yeah. Oh, I was like, what was it? <laughs> well, what she threw the spear through the guy's skull. Oh, that's what like, that yeah, meant. Yeah. Okay. Jorah, this isn't you. Who are you? <laughs> Your captor. Do you have wine? No. Can't sleep without wine. Then stay awake. Mm -hmm. Going the wrong way. My sister's in Westeros. We're heading east. You said you were taking me to the queen. I am. Queen Daenerys Targaryen. She's the queen I serve. That would be so scary if you're Tyrion. I know, but aren't you already <laughs> headed that way? That would be like, I'm already going there, though. What a waste of a good kidnapping. Oh. <laughs> so happens I was heading there myself. What business would you have with a queen? Gold and glory. Oh, and hate. If you'd ever met my sister, you'd understand. A high-born knight from the north of Westeros, down on his luck in Essos. You're observing. Mormont. Is it possible that you were running? Why would she have sent you away? Why are you giving away how clever oh, you are? Wait. Mm -hmm. You were spying on her, weren't you? Didn't he know? Yeah. It's all coming back to me. I was drunk through most of the small council meetings, but mm -hmm. it's all coming back. She found out, didn't she? Found out and exiled you. Now you hope to win back her favor with a gift. Risky scheme. One might even say desperate. <laughs> you think Daenerys will execute me and pardon you? I'd say the reverse is just as likely. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Did he just go to sleep? Yeah, he helped him. He didn't have wine. He hit him with that wine back first. <laughs> Everyone looks happy enough from up here. I was thinking about all the times your brother made me go with him down from the Red Keep into the streets of King's Landing. We like to walk among the people. We like to sing to them. He sang to them. Rhaegar would pick a spot on the hook or the Street of Seeds, and then he'd sing, just like all the other minstrels. 
And what did you do? I made sure no one killed him. And I collected the money. I'd like to see how much he could make. He was good? He was very good. But Sarah's never told you. He told me Rhaegar was good at killing people. Rhaegar never liked killing. He loved singing. And what did you do with the money? Well, one time he gave it to the next missile down the street. One time he gave it to an orphanage in Flea Bottom. Aww. One time we got horribly drunk. His dar is here, waiting in the audience chamber. Think I can protect you from his dar, Zolorak. I think I can protect me from his dar, Zolorak. <laughs> Go, Sebastian. Sing a song for me. Oh, I thought he was really going to have to hit the notes real quick. I'm really glad he didn't. <laughs> but not all can die in glory. Glory. Oh, why else do men fight? Why did your ancestors cross the narrow sea and conquer the seven kingdoms so their names would live on? Those who find victory in the fighting pits will never become kings, but their names will live on. It's the best chance they'll ever have. Is that what you used to tell men before you set them to butchering each other for sport? Your grace, today is the traditional start of the fighting season. I do not recognize this tradition. <laughs> Traditions are the only thing that will hold this city, your city, together. Without them, former slaves and former masters have nothing in common. Uh oh. Nothing but centuries of mistrust and resentment. Where are they at? I can't promise this is the answer to all our problems, but it's a start. In that pyramid? I don't know. That's where they live, apparently. <laughs> Girl, you are involved. Why is she listening like that? Because she's getting them killed. She just trapped them. That's what she did. She's sneaky. See? <gasps> that better not be Grey Worm. No, they ain't killing Grey Worm. Oh. oh my gosh. No. Not right now, right? No, it took out like what? Three? Oh no. Tell me he's all alone. Oh my god. Uh -oh. This show's too much because people can die in any episode. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't trust nobody in this show. No. This is a brutal attack. Was that a green one? I don't know. No. Oh, there he is. I think he's fighting without the helmet for identification purposes. The old head came out. He said, let me show y'all what I got. That's just how we swung it back in the 60s, boys. And the king landed. This is about to be the death, man. No, he's not dying. Oh. No, 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 no. Oh. Uh -uh. Ah, man. Good shot, Grey Worm. Is he okay? Nah. Well, I'm pretty sure Jorah won't mind. Is Grey Worm okay? Are y'all good? They're dead. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. Wow. So that was Game of Thrones, man. We lost some characters. We lost Selmy. We lost Grey Worm. Um, Potentially. Well, it we didn't see like him bleed it. out the same way we did right. Selmy. But yeah. yo, man, I, I think he's dead, man. That was crazy. Uh, Dang, they fought hard. If they died on the last kills, I would flip out. That's what I'm saying. They fought too hard. That's what I'm saying. I can't. I can't believe it. That was wild, guys. So basically, Daenerys doesn't really have a hold of this city at all. Mm -mm. They got a long ways to go, and there's way more of those sons of harpy than I thought. Right. That the insurgency is becoming bigger. Like they're recruiting people. They they're obviously they have a base. They're planning things out. They're so obviously, obviously like, there's a lot funded. of people against her. Yeah. 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 So. That's something that she's really going to have to look out for right there, man. Crazy episode. Tyrion was kidnapped ultimately by Jorah. Um, Just to take him to, to the same spot he's going. <laughs> right. Which, you know, the way that he arrives there under what, like, pretexts could have a lot to do with basically how he's perceived by the queen, though. Because mm -hmm. I don't know... Like, dude, he might become dragon food for all right. I know. So, bring, know? so Varys presenting him would be a whole different meaning than Jorah bringing him as, like, a prisoner. Right. So, babe, how do you think that this episode advances in the story? I mean, obviously, we have the High Sparrow people, and we got that craziness going on, which don't really know how I feel about that, guys. If we start doing the whole Catholic church thing, state versus church and all that, like, it, it's cool. I just hope that it doesn't become too big of a thing because... I feel like it's just used kind of so... Sir, I feel like Cersei wants to have control of like that guy. So that's why she like recruited him because like the other guy she didn't really have control over. They kind of like used him to like get him on the street. So when she has this guy, she kind of like brought him power. You know, as I'm sitting here in real time thinking about it, though, I might actually really like this storyline. I don't really know how I feel about it, guys. We're fresh off the recording, but it does make a lot of sense, though, because there's such a power vacuum. Right. Right. And because I'm sitting here thinking like. At first, my original thought was like adding this whole element into the show. What it does for me personally, it diminishes the strength of King's Landing. And like, I don't really want that because I want it to be I want it to be strong and prestigious because I want the show to be strong and prestigious. Right. If that's if that makes any type of sense, man. And so with these with these people coming in, it just sort of diminishes that to me. But at the same time, like, what would you expect? A, a soft boy king, uh, a queen who 
has an agenda that I mean, obviously her agenda is her whole family just want just uses her politically, right? And she's been taught from a young age that she has like a role to play in her family. Right. To help, but like, I think it's it. like a big deal right now that she's like making these choices because Taiwan just died. So like it's really a big deal for her to do something right now. They have to do some type of power move. I feel like she's thinking teaming up with like a religious thing will help. You're talking about Cersei? Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that Cersei's basically in a position to where she's lost so much control and she's realized that she has to do something radical to shake up the board because she yeah. just doesn't have a card left on the because, table. Because, like, that's what people are saying. Like, the soft boy king can't do anything, so Cersei kind of just taking it upon herself, in my opinion, to do something. Anything. Well, what's interesting to me is, I don't know, man. Cersei obviously just has... A strong belief in herself, man. She definitely thinks that she's going to be able to control the situation because I could never see Cersei conceding power that she didn't think that she could backtrack or take yeah. back. Yeah. Right. But these people right here, man, they don't even answer to the King's Guard. So they don't, yeah, they don't play. The King tried to walk up to him and they were like, sorry, dude. Like, you just can't. He's praying. Like, sorry. You're the King. We get it. But like, God's more important than you. Sorry. And like the thing is, ultimately, man, like obviously in the show, they're making these people out to be crazy and they're carving shit in their forehead. And so obviously they, they seem crazy. Right? But they were so radical so fast. Exactly. Like they came out swinging. Well, yeah. Right? Like, that's why it was kind of weird. And that's why it, it, when the guy said, I guess that kind of stuck out to me. The guy said last episode, Tywin Lannister wouldn't have allowed this. So it was like immediately Tywin Lannister dies and like. All these little things that were like rising up, they're like, finally, we can spread our our ways. Like, Taiwan won't take us down because well, no one cares. Yeah, I mean, it's just the way they portrayed it. I mean, the show portrays it the way the show chooses to portray it for sure. I mean, an argument could be made like, would society, would this particular society be better under like a different type of rule? Like, if it was ruled more by the church opposed to the state? Because the state in this world is not very good at all. I mean, it's extremely corrupt. The state in this world will walk into a brothel and slaughter your baby. And not only I that, mean, you, you know, that's you not any saw better, so. Flea Bottom. You saw how just bad it was. Like, right. they're struggling terribly there. I feel like the show could definitely play with that a little more. It could be more open to, like, portraying that in a more realistic way, I feel like. But ultimately, they're choosing to just make these folks come in crazy, like, like a cult almost. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. But... I definitely think it's interesting, but it's it, it really just speaks to Cersei to me. Like, she is so desperate that she would concede power to someone. But I, I think someone. also she's trying to get some power, too, because Tom and Loki's trying to send her away. And then another thing I just thought about is Jamie's gone. Her dad's right. gone. Tommen's a boy king, and he's, you know, getting laid for mm. the first time. So what is and he, he? And he's trying to send her away. Like, he and so her there. in Cersei's mind, like, dude, for the first time in her adult life, she doesn't really have anyone to challenge her. Nobody. Like, she's completely even, like Jamie's gone. And then you just saw right there, man, Jamie uh, finally won a fight. So we saw Jamie in action with one mm -hmm. hand and he, he it dub, might help man. him. Yeah, he got the dub. He could use it in a fight. Yeah, absolutely. And I just don't think it's a good strategy to try to use it in a fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like the blade's going to bounce off my thumb and catch me <laughs> in the cheek. Uh, but it was really interesting to see them land on the beaches of Dorne. Anytime we add like somewhere new in the geography, it's, cool, yeah. it's so freaking cool, man, because just the way that, you know, guys, we get lost in the sauce watching the show and we get caught up and we forget to mention how amazing the like the scenery is. Because it's top tier. All those little details, man. And those details don't get lost on us when we watch it. I'm definitely appreciating it. But right. it's just one of those things, man. We talk so much. But we talk so much, guys, not because we try to be annoying, but it's because this show is just. It just brings it out of you. So, mm -hmm. um, what about Sansa? Let's talk about Sansa. Sansa is in the toughest pickle. What do you think, babe? If you're Sansa, you tell me from a woman's perspective. What are you thinking if you're Sansa in this world from a well, woman's view? Well, okay. For me, when Littlefinger kind of told Sansa you can avenge them and stuff, I just feel like maybe maybe Littlefinger has that much hold on her or whatever. But but me personally, and I'm not in her position in any way. So, but me personally. If he was trying to tell me I could avenge them, I just feel like that's such a long game that I'm not willing to really play. Like, sitting there, like, with a family I don't know, thinking I'm going to somehow infiltrate. Like, unless I trusted my, like, manipulation skills on a family I don't know, I I'm not really betting on myself. You know, it just seems like 
in order to play that long game like you're talking about, you'd have to have a lot of discipline and yeah. a lot of trust. And you'd really have to be okay deep in your soul with the idea that it might not work out that way. Right. And they might could just torture the crap out of you worse than the dang. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know these people. You don't and know them. they can do some horrific. Sorry, guys. My hair is crazy. Like, they clearly, do they do horrific things. And she might not quite know this yet, but... She's going to find out, I'm sure. I'm sure she'll see him doing something to someone. Or if you think about it, and this is what I was thinking about, what if she sees Theon? I know she doesn't really like Theon, but she'll see he's, like, tortured. Well, Theon saw her, and he he bowed his head. Yeah, he because he's nervous. He's nervous because, like, she he destroyed Winterfell. Like, well, well, he's basically Ramsay's pet, so eventually she's going to see him. And that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. her dang husband, that's her pet. I don't know, man. Maybe Sansa. Or fiancé, right? Maybe the Sansa fiance's. and Ramsay will do a little... Little couple, little couple filleting on Theon. Right. What if Sansa turns crazy? Right. What if, like, dude, I never even thought that maybe she could embrace it. But you know what the thing is? Maybe she will. You know how Marjorie like came in and embraced Joffrey's psychoness. What if Sansa kind of does that? What if Sansa's like the final boss in the show? Like, oh my what god! What if she becomes evil from Ramsay? Learns all the manipulation tactics from from little every finger. little person, and then she like takes all these like powers and absorbs them and uses them. It wouldn't surprise me. Be crazy. That'd be some dark Phoenix stuff, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would. Um, I don't know, man. This show is going straight wild. So, what over do you think Daenerys is gonna do with Tyrion? Like, what do you think? What is Daenerys gonna do with Tyrion? Yeah. What's your well, What do you think is gonna happen? With she's that? probably gonna get outsmarted by him again. Ultimately, it's probably what's gonna happen. Uh, I'm sure if she had it her way, she would play. She would do that little game, you know, the one where you grab the foot and you tickle the toes and you break them off. So you don't think she's going to just like put him on? You don't think she trial? No, they're past trial, bro. No, like, you don't. Th no, I'm talking about Daenerys. You don't think she's going to. Oh, I thought you said Cersei. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> what? I, I don't know why you asked me that. I, I thought you were just saying hypothetically if, if if she gets her hands on Tyrion. No, I'm saying if the no Tyrion's about to meet up with Daenerys. What do you think Daenerys is going to do with Tyrion? Is she going to like embrace him or try to kill him? Because he's a Lannister. He's a Lannister. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's really hard to see. So obviously, I don't know. We'll just have to see. I, I really don't know. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. Either. He's a Lannister. But the thing about Tyrion is like, obviously, the show's made a really big point to point out the fact that he's a Lannister by blood and name, but he's not anything like a Lannister. Like He, right. he beats his own drums. And so. I feel like Daenerys kind of reflects that, too, because the Mad Kings, you know, so I feel like they kind of have a parallel to each other. So I feel like they might bond over that. Maybe I'm genuinely not trying to be funny, guys. Seriously, but what if what if Tyrion went the way of Sir Davos, made his own sigil, and became like the Ant Man or something? That'd be cool. Know. You know what I'm saying? That'd be sick, yeah. right? Would that not be cool? Like, uh, and I mean, honestly, I hate to you know I hate to say good things about Littlefinger because he's annoying, but he did it too with the um little mockingbird thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like seeing the maps and stuff. Uh, like, like for example, one of the reasons that it's so cool that you guys sent us like maps and stuff is like when Littlefinger talks about like the fingers and stuff like that, you know. Um, and then we also saw it on the lore video mm -hmm. and stuff, like just seeing like the landscapes and stuff. So cool. So I try yeah, to picture that map really when they're traveling across this world the best I can. Um, and it's cool in this season, particular particularly because they're traveling a lot. So we're getting to see like you know a how they travel, which is interesting. And be like just all the like scenery and all the different places that we don't really get to visit. All right. Lot. And they're telling so much story with like the locations they're picking the just like the way like the fog rolls in on certain like locations they decide. Like, for example, the place where Arya left the Hound, that certain location. Somebody in the comments let us know where that was filmed because I'm sure one of you people know, but. It was really amazing there. It was beautiful. Right. And it was just such a good location. The Eerie. Yeah, yeah, over yeah. there where the area was. Like, remember they said they were a couple miles on the outskirts of the area. Yeah, they were like yeah. ten. What did they say? Ten miles to the bloody gate. The music, man, just the way. You know, even with this show, it's really crazy because the reigns of Casimir is overused in this show. Like they use it so mm -hmm. much, but it's just the way that like every time it comes in, it's different. Yeah, you know, what and I mean? like sometimes it will be like a really like upbeat reigns of Casimir, and sometimes it will be a slow, drawn out. Like, yeah, I love that. Moment. It's cool. It's like I said, I know I say it compared to Lord of the Rings a lot, but like the music they play behind the characters reflects a lot like about the emotion of the show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of shows do that, but <laughs> yeah, some but shows I, do it better than others. Honestly, sure. this is the truth. I never noticed it until I started like reacting on this channel. Oh, I never noticed a lot of things. Yeah. I, I never noticed like music playing in the background of things because like I never like honestly considered it. That's just the truth. I never like sat there and was like, 
oh, there's different music playing with this character pops up. But when you're really focused on it because you're like reacting to it, you notice things like that. I never really noticed how every single every single episode or TV show or movie or whatever, they all choose to have like a certain light, like a certain look which a lot of you guys might not know, but it's basically like the color grade of the film. So I used to just think that they would shoot and record and film and things would just come out the way they came out. So Speaking of that, though, there was one particular scene in this that I thought was just color graded beautifully. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Do you? The one where Tommen was walking up to the people um, and like just the contrast of the black and then the, you could see like the red cloaks in the back. It was just beautifully colored. It was it was good. Like, That's exactly the scene I was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, doubt for it. For sure, hundred percent. It looked great. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Every scene in the show is just. But just that one in particular, the colors on it. If you go back and look at it, were just phenomenal. I wanted to note it in there, but it was just a really intense scene. So I was just, I was scared what they were gonna do. I, I wasn't sure. I mean, man, I'm seeing like hairstyles and little clips, and there's just all kinds of things in here that are really cool. So. Um, in terms of the story, man, it basically looks like we're just shaking things up, man. If I had to sum it up, if I had to sum it up, guys, this is where we're at in Game of Thrones, okay? So where we're at, King's Landing's falling apart. There's a moral decay going on. I don't know if it's necessarily a moral decay, but the illusion of just like this majestic place is falling apart, right? Anyway, so there's a religious fanaticism coming over the place, right? And it's being egged on by Cersei because ultimately that was a power move to... Maybe that was just a giant petty move. I don't think it's necessarily a giant petty move just to get at the queen's brother. You know, right? What I'm I don't think she did all that just just for Loris. Like, yeah, she, oh, she couldn't well, be that. She couldn't be that that's petty. That's her ex fiance too. But she couldn't be I just that petty. That. Yeah, yeah no, she like, didn't give a damn about him. And she sent the dad off too. Uh, uh, wow. I don't know what's gonna happen with the boy king and you know the queen. Bless them. I, you know, I hope they have a lot of fun and do great things. I don't know what's going to happen with him. I don't know if he's going to be good. I don't know if he's going to be bad. He seems good. He seems like the type that you would just be like, oh, my Lord, how and then stab him. You know what I'm saying? That's what it seems like. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. I feel like I feel like an assassination is going to come. I feel like somebody's just going to He just seemed like, uh, well, it really irritated me. I was like, like, okay, I, I hate to praise Joffrey, but Joffrey would not have allowed that. You know what I'm saying? Like. He would have oh, demanded it. Yeah, his ego would have never. Right. So like, and I hate to say that about Tommen, but he just doesn't really like he's he needs someone to guide him. He needs help. So basically the capital's falling apart. The North is being ran by just absolute brutal warlords who, you know, definitely are, you know, even though this world has a very, has a very low standard for like what's acceptable. These people like way fell that they fell that like so bad. So. The Norse is not any good right now. The wall is falling apart. There's no men. So basically the realm of men is just looking terrible. Right. Uh, even the wildlings are low in numbers right now, mm -hmm. it appears. And the winter is coming and they keep telling us. So I feel like a big war is coming. And, you know, there's a whole lot of smoke and mirrors going on. But the show is basically trying to tell me at least what I'm picking up on is enjoy the politics, enjoy the dialogue, enjoy the acting and just the wonderful wonderful stuff that we're giving you down here but the reality is man keep your eyes north keep your eyes on the well stannis on the dead. is about to march there to the winterfell so yeah i don't know what's well that's what i'm there. saying though ultimately like the the living the living that we're sitting here getting distracted by like they're just killing each other and dwindling their numbers but we're gonna need them against the dead right. and that's the that's the whole conundrum of oh, the we'll show we'll see it sometime this season i bet when it just when we least expect it Man, I don't know, man. So that's basically where I see the show going. I mean, like, is there any grand theories or anything? Oh, and then there's obviously Daenerys. There's just a lot going on with the mm -hmm. show, man. There really are. You have to juggle like seven different storylines. I know. That's why when I when I'm editing, I like watch it over and over. And there's so many different things I find out that I'm just like, whoa, I forgot that all that happened. That's crazy. It's just a lot in one episode. So we got three main contenders, though. We got <laughs> Daenerys, Stannis, and the Boy King down south. Well, he's. If you think about it, there's really no contenders. He's the king. Tommen. <laughs> Tommen, yeah. It was like, okay, yeah, but that's not true, the though. contenders, okay. But that's not really true, though. Like, usurpers. <laughs> we've, you know, because we've established that, like, being, like, is he the king? He just walked up and demanded something, and they told him no, and he went home. Is he the king? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's you know just what I'm saying? He, he ain't the king to me. I bet it seems Stannis, like their words seem bad, wrong. That's Stannis why it, walks up to those stairs. They're going to let him in because it's just right, Stannis. You right. Know he's going to demand it. And, it seems like John kind of established that with himself too. He kind of was like, 
listen, Janos, you're the example, my boy. I gotta, I gotta take you out. You're wilding with your bald head, acting crazy. What was he saying? What was Janos saying to John in the thing? Like, oh, he was oh, just man. saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just was saying whatever. Yeah, he was. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and, and don't even get me started with that right there. But I'm just sitting here, just in a complete deep thought because i'm i'm sitting here thinking i'm sorry but i was zoning out <laughs> i'm thinking about the fact that they're dragging citizens through town uh all the people in the streets are just see, are accepting it how fast society is they just, showed that guy naked they literally right. like whooped his butt down the street and and all the people just accepted it and it became like the norm literally like instantaneously and everyone just accepted it and moved on and that was it right and it just kind of scares me because i'm sitting there just thinking like that could get out of hand really quick. Right, because I feel like anyone who's on trial now, Cersei could just throw out there. She's, You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I feel like they're only bringing the, these people into it, though. Because maybe the show's just trying to find a way to like shake up the power dynamics of King's Landing. Possibly. I don't know, man. Crazy episode. Uh, it's the first time we really got to meet Tommen. It was the first time we really got right. to Right, I was going to say he had himself. the most like words this episode. And like honestly, what I got out of it is he's a kid. <laughs> He's just a kid, man. Yeah. He's just not ready for And he got his first love. Like, he just, he's going to be like, you know, just listen to everything she says, basically. He got his first something. Uh -huh. All right, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit us up on Patreon. And if you don't, I'm going to send the hot sparrow after you. So get it together.